Well, welcome to Midway Blog Show's first live show, everyone. My name is Eric Rogan, host of Bearspam.com. I'd like you to introduce you to... Hey, I'm Chester Church from BeardownBlog.net, and today we're going to discuss linebackers. And the Bears, Eric, have a lot of linebackers, and there's no way that we are going to keep this many on the roster. So where do we start? We could, we could start with well, who's starting, or we could start with who's getting cut. There's a lot of different angles we can go. I'd like to start with who we think are going to be the starters, because this is where me and you kind of differ, because I really think one of the rookies is going to get a shot at starting. But let's hear who you think are going to start. Who's your three starting linebackers for the Bears right now? Right now, of course, we've got Lance Briggs. We've got DJ Williams, and we've got mm -hmm. James Anderson. Mm -hmm. And that I, I, as much as I like both rookie linebackers that we drafted, I just don't see either one of them beating out Williams or Anderson this year. Are you sure you're going to stick with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with it. I mean, if it changes, that's good because yeah. Williams and Anderson are both legit. So if Bostic comes in and he beats out either one of them in a competition, I'm okay with it. But I'll believe it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm done. Okay, I was going to say, I really think it's going to be DJ Williams, that middle linebacker, Lance Briggs, the right outside linebacker. But I think James Anderson is going to have some really stiff competition from our second-round pick, John Bostick, because even though, you know, rookie minicamp for today, and, he, you know, I was thinking in my head when he said he played mostly uh, cover one and cover three, it actually didn't dawn on me till then. You know, one of the main things we had problems with is, one of our linebackers will usually get burned or, you know, he'll usually lose his man or, you know, the man or whoever he's covering is usually faster than him. John Bostic is really, really quick. And I think having him at that, you know, left outside linebacker position would be great over James Anderson. He would be a rookie. There would be some growing pain, but I really think he could thrive in that spot and then eventually just learn to move around. I really like it. Because if Lance Briggs is going to be calling the play, because, you know, we or that's what I think is going to happen. I think Lance Briggs is going to be calling the play. I really would like to see some of the rookies get in there, you know, have a really good veteran, especially one, you know, Lance Briggs, kind of uh, showing them the ropes. I really don't know what, we, what we're going to get with DJ Williams or James Anderson. I think it's going to be good. But we know what we're going to get with Lance Briggs. So that's what I think is going to happen with our three starting linebackers. Who do you think uh, who do you think is going to get cut? Because we got like one, two, three, four. We got five other linebackers who are just special teamers. Yeah, well, the first name that comes to my mind would be Dom DeSico. And there's Theron Patrick, Wilson Lawrence. I mean, the, these guys, I mean, they're it's hard to recognize their names almost. Yeah, I, I mean, just don't think we'll keep special teamers around as as many as the, we've got too many good rookies to keep these guys around. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I understand, you know, maybe they wouldn't want to start the rookies as special teams because they wouldn't want them want them to get hurt in case they really did need a backup. But I mean, there's no reason to keep five linebackers on the roster. I mean, there is a reason if you you have a lot of injured linebackers, but I think we're just, you know, over we're just paying good special team players because they're good at special teams. When as much as as much as we'd like to believe as Chicago, you know, fans that special teams will win the game, they really don't often win the game for the Bears anymore. Even though Devin Hester is great, that's a whole other topic we can get into and all that. But I really don't want to pay Blake Constanzo and Dom DeSinco just to be special team players if they're not going to, you know, really perform up to special team, you know, I guess I'm kind of putting them on a high pedestal, even though they're really not that good. But I just really think, I think JT Thomas, you know, the rookie, or not a rookie anymore, but I really think he's just going to get, you know, cut soon unless he shows something and, you know, challenges James Anderson for the job. I really think JT Thomas is out of here too. Right. Which and would leave us with two linebackers, but – Right, and J.T. Thomas, he's he's a popular guy. I mean, we've heard it for, what, two, three years now. The guy's good. He deserves a shot. When's he going to get a shot? 
And it, it's got to kind of make you nervous that he hasn't got a shot yet. He hasn't had almost any playing time. That makes you wonder if, you know, Lovey's seen him and is like, hey, I don't, I just, there's not a spot for you. Well, that's weird, though. Last year, you know, sadly, Erlacher went down and, you know, we had to put Nick Roach in the middle linebacker spot. You would have thought that that would have been JT Thomas' sign, or, uh, time to sign, but I didn't see anything. Like, and, and it's really weird that he didn't get a shot because that that's the position he would actually be suited for that we know so far with his ability, his speed, you know, all that. But the fact that he didn't even get a, a decent shot to even try out was, you know, it should have been a sign that, this guy is really just a special team player or the coaching is really, really bad. One of the two. <laughs> right. So what do you think about our new uh, defensive coordinator? Do you think he's going to help these linebackers? Because that's one thing I was always so wondering your thoughts about is the loss of Levy Smith, Rod Marinelli, or Marinelli, and then the linebacker coach. Even though uh, Bob Abbott was not a very good defensive coordinator, per se. Yeah, he can't deny. Nice. yeah, he was a really good linebacker coach, in my opinion. I mean, he had, yes, he had Lance Briggs and he had Brian Erlanker, but someone had to develop the talent. Someone had to keep them on their game, keep them pumped up. And, you know, Rod Marinelli did that for the whole defense. But do you think our linebackers are going to, like, lose, I guess you could say, their edge now without, you know, any of those coaches? I hope not. I I really like Mel Tucker. He's he's a developing guy. He's he's good with talent. He's he's really good with not so good talent. So I I, th I think the defense is going to be just fine as a whole, especially the linebackers. And there's just something about Chicago Bears having good linebackers. You got to look at that too. It just happens. It's almost supernatural. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how it happened, but I'm not going to complain or argue with it. Right. Do you yeah, think, that's, um, yeah. Go ahead. No, <laughs> I was just going to say that's why we've got to be excited about this competition. Like, I don't, I don't see, you know, uh, Anderson or Williams losing a job to a rookie. But like you said, if they, if there's a good competition and a rookie wins the job, that's, that's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I mean, well, it sucks for that person who thought they had a starting spot, but it's a great win-win for everybody who wants to see the defense be successful and wants the defense to continue their dominance. So that's the one thing I'm worried about is that with the new defense a coordinator or the new defensive coordinator, the new pieces in, you know, how much of it's going to be different compared to last year. Because last year you could almost make a case for – Lance Briggs, Charles Tillman, and even Tim Jennings at one time that, you know, they could have been defensive players of the year. What do you, do you right. think any of these linebackers are going to be able to, like, step up at all and do maybe get, like, Pro Bowl status besides Lance Briggs? Oh, I hope so. Uh, I would like to see Anderson get his first Pro Bowl. I, I've watched him living in South Carolina. I've watched him a bunch of times the last few years, and he, he, he's a good linebacker, and he probably could have went to a few Pro Bowls, but he hasn't. And now I'm, now you got me thinking he might not even win a starting job, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. I mean, I think the James Anderson pick was a really good pickup, and I think it really, really helps to give us more backup. And it's more of like a safety net, to be honest with you. We lost Nick Roach. We knew that was going to happen, to be quite honest. I mean, we kind of had hopes he would come back, but we knew he would be gone. We all had hopes Erlacher would be back, but he that totally got destroyed. But I really think James Anderson is a safety net. We got a solid guy who we know who can play the position well. We don't know if he can play it at a high level, but we know he, he can play it at a pretty good position or a pretty good level. And we also have some linebackers who could challenge him. I mean, we're not talking about Kasim Green, but he could definitely, you know, he could totally step up. I mean, what round was Lance Briggs drafted in again? Was it the third round? Or the fourth round. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was one of those, and either way, it was a steal. Yeah, and you think about it, you know, Kasim Green, he, or, I'm pretty sure he was a fourth-round pick. I could be wrong off the top of my head, but just to think that, you know, it doesn't really matter what round you're drafted in. 
if you were even if you just signed on to the team, you can definitely get a shot at starting right. if you're playing well enough. And I really think these rookies are going to show that to our uh, to, to Mel Tucker at least. And I really right. think you know. Go ahead. I was going to say I don't. I just kind of off subject. I don't know if you've seen it, but during the draft, Lance Briggs did an interview with NFL. And uh, he was talked about the whole draft experience with him and stuff, and that's worth checking out. Because he talked about the, I don't know, it was like 11 or 13 linebackers that was taken before him and how it just put fuel in his fire and really got under his skin and helped him develop, I think. Because <laughs> he started no with way. the chip on his shoulder. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Okay, I'll send you a link later. Everybody out there uh, watching us, you need to check that video out. It's really cool. I bet I bet it is because I didn't think about it. You know, he did. He probably had a very, very big chip on his shoulder. Yeah, I mean, he was there on draft day and just kind of sitting there and sitting with his family, and everyone's like, "Wow, they're not calling my name." And finally, they did, and he was relieved, and he had a chip on his shoulder. Well, that's the thing. Like you know, when you look at what made him a bad linebacker, according to the draft expert, it's the same thing for the linebackers we have now, and almost every. Every great linebacker, it's you know, it's just a couple little things they just need to improve on, and just keep and you know, just keep doing what they're good at. And you know, one of the good things Lance Briggs was good at, he was a hard hitter and he was a hard worker. And I remember this to this day. The, the first thing they said about him was he was just going to be a special team player, and he totally blew that out of the water, <laughs> as we all know. Right, he so, was I mean, more than that. Hey, another thing is, I want to mention about the defense, uh, you were talking about or asked me about Mel Tucker earlier. And one of the things I think that's going to be good for us is he's learning all of the Bears terminology, all those veteran guys that have been playing that are really the core of this awesome defense. He's learning their terminology, and I think that's just going to help everybody move along. So instead of everybody learning a new system, they're going to be teaching – Mel Tucker this new system and that's going to be great because it's not necessarily going to look the same I'm not saying that I th I think we have the potential of being better because Mel Tucker is notorious for being very aggressive you know and a lot of times as soon as the Bears if the Bears had a three-point lead we're going into a very deep kind of safe go ahead and let them you know get some offensive plays off we'll be okay for a little while and we'll mm -hmm. just strip the ball later. I, th I think Mel Tucker's going to be a little more aggressive and blitz more, even even if we're, you know, three, seven, ten points ahead. I really think the Bears are going to get after us, after the uh, other teams this year. What do you think about his blitz scheme? Do you like it, or do you like the cover two scheme that Levy had more? Well, I, obviously, Levy's defense proved to be much better. But then again, Lovey has some really good talent, you know, the last decade with the Bears. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, I don't know because Mel Tucker is going to be running the Bears offense this year. It's not like the Bears are going to be running Mel Tucker's offense, and I think, I think that will help us. So it's going to look very similar. I just think we'll, we'll be more aggressive. Do you mean defense and not offense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said offense twice, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, excuse me. No, no it's fine. But I really think uh, – I'm not going to lie. I love the cover two system, and I think we have – you said we have great players. I think some of them have developed into great players. There's one thing Levy Smith did do. He did make the defense work very, very well, and he did have it performing at a high level almost every week. But um, I really think Charles Tillman, you know, great cover two corner. Tim Jennings, a nice, you know – not backup, but basically the second, you know, corner on the other side, a great cover two corner too. And I loved our linebackers and our defensive line was really good too. We still need another defensive end to help, you know, Julius Peppers out because Julius Peppers takes on way too many blocks, at least, you know, two or three times. Right. He's always double, he's always triple teamed. And hopefully now with, you know, is we should see some more of, you know, Shea, you know, our rookie uh, linebacker from last year, or our rookie linebacker, our first-round pick from last year, step up a little bit. That's something, you know, I was going to bring up. Do you think we might start seeing him 
go to linebacker. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, I know where you're going, man. And it's I'm like everyone else. We've been talking about it, you know, for over a year now. But I don't know. I think I think he did pretty good as like a sort of a drop back defensive end where he kind of spied the the uh, mm-hmm. option quarterbacks and whatnot. He did okay in that. But I, I'm not sure that makes him qualified to replace Briggs or Roach. I really think something's going to happen soon because I, I just do not he, – he's got the ability to be – like I really liked his role as a joker basically where he can go here or there. But I really, really want to see him use more and more because he was a first-round pick. You know, we don't want to – you don't draft someone in the first round and then not start them till like the third year unless some serious injuries or some serious, you know, problems learning or developing. I don't know, but <laughs> what or, do you got? Or unless you just took that pick to upset the Packers. I've heard that rumor. Everyone but, said mean, that. They that, said we did. That, they, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, man. I was going to say, they, they said we did the same thing this year. Like, they were going to take Kyle Long, and we took him before they could. And it's like, I, I'm getting tired of this. I mean, I, I don't know if we're really hoping ourselves or hurting ourselves. <laughs> right, but, you know, mess, anytime you can mess up the Packers, it's a plus. And then if you can de- develop the first-round talent, hey, that's a bonus. Yeah, well, <laughs> I really hope that, you know, our first-round picks start – performing i mean i really i mean that's what everyone thinks we drafted that guy and we drafted long so we would avoid you know or we would help upset the packers but i don't know i really think you know i think uh i think shay is actually going to get a shot to show really what he is because i think this is a development stage and we'll talk about this more in our actual show i think this is a stage to see or I think this whole season really is to see which players can we keep at a 4-3 level and which players do we need to move on to either a hybrid or a 3-4 because it's so hard to think or amazing or it's basically very hard to see Julius Peppers staying with us next year even though he earns every penny he he's a great football player but he's just going to be making way too much next year and unless he restructures and all that kind of nonsense that we're not going to get to know right now but I really think we're in a beginning stage of seeing whether we need to stay in a 4-3 or move on and if we move on I really like the way we could move on with some of the linebackers we have even now and with some of the uh, outside linebackers we could use in DN because Henry Melton he can be a no. He really not big enough to be a no tackle on a three four. He could, but he would be perfect because he was a former defensive end. He could be perfect to be a DN in a three four. You got good linebackers. You got Charles Tillman if we keep him or Tim Jennings. You know Charles Tillman covers Calvin Johnson every game. I think he's good enough to play in a three four. And the only thing really our question marks is our safeties. But I really do think our um, starting core linebackers. I really think the rookies are going to step up, and I think they're going to determine whether or not we need to change to a 3-4 or a 4-3. What do you think? I, I, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I really I like how the 4-3 uh, has been working out for us. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you know, with Mark Tressman and Mel Tucker, they might they might want to mix it up. And if they do, you're right. We do have some talent that would look good. Like McClellan, he would he would look good. And if if the Packers did want him, you could see why. He looked okay for the Bears last year, but he would have been a bad dude on the opposite side of Clay Matthews. I think so too, especially because Clay Matthews has a combination of speed and power. But Shea, he mostly just has speed. But to have him just coming off the edge and then Clay, or Clay Matthews, you know, just bearing down, it would have been perfect. I really. I really wish we would have kept Rod Marinelli to kind of help develop him as more of a DN if we were going to keep him there. But I really think his best work is going to come from being an outside linebacker or a linebacker at some point in time because I, I see the speed when he comes off the line to be a defensive end, but I don't see the power or any other swing moves or anything 
to really help him be a defensive end. I just see one player, you know, doing what he can. You know what I mean? Right. But that's about it that I think we have about all the linebackers and everything. You want to see if we have any tweets tonight to see if we can get them going? Yeah, sure. Let's yeah, sure. check, see if we got any tweets. And uh, for everybody listening live right now, if you got a question or comment for us, just tweet us with hashtag MWB show. That stands for Midway Blog Show. MWB show. And we'll get to it. Yeah. We should have a million of them. A million. Yeah. They're just rolling in. <laughs> And uh, while he's looking up the tweet, I was going to let you all know, each live show we're going to do a different position. This position was linebackers, and we talked about the defense, and we added some of the other information to it. Next week we'll do a different position. If you want us to talk about a certain position or you have a certain question, like we said, just send us a tweet or a question or comment, and we'll try to bring it up whenever we have the live show. But um, if you have any good position questions, like if you want us to talk about the quarterbacks next or the running backs, wide receivers or even the safeties you know just let us know and we'll get started on it and we'll make it our next show but right now I think we got a good topic tonight and we'll have a good topic for next week yeah hey we just got a tweet there man and it's from Clixie Picks at Clixie Picks and he wants to know who's going to get cut this season who's going to get cut hmm. I would say Dom DeCinco because I really haven't seen much from him. He's more of a special team player, and he was kind of a hybrid. Because you remember everyone talking about him backing up Erlacher during training camp and, you know, mini camp, and they were thinking, you know, since he played safety and he moved to linebacker, like it happens every year in Chicago, we have the backup, or, you know, he's going to be the next future Erlacher. But it's not the case. I think he's a good kid. I think he could, you know, still, you know, make it in the NFL as a special team or a practice squad guy. But I think him, JT Thomas, I think those two guys are more likely to get cut because they just haven't produced. I mean, opportunities have been there with our lacquer hurt and with, uh, you know, even Lance Briggs, the occasional game where he'll be out. There, there's been opportunity for them to come in and just haven't seen it. And I think those are the two guys who definitely need to get – Either show up or, you know, pack your bag. What do you think? Well, as far as the linebackers concerned, you're, you're probably right. DeSico, Thomas, maybe even uh, Blake Costanzo and uh, Theron Patrick. But uh, it's it's so hard to tell who's going to get cut. I wish we knew, but, you know, we won't know for a while. But here here's a question before hopefully we get another tweet. I want to ask you is where is Israel Adonage? Oh man, I don't think he. I really. I said this in the very beginning, and um, you asked me this a long time ago. What I thought about Israel Adonage, whether he was coming back or not, and I said it's looking like it's not going to happen, and I. It's still looking like it's going to be that possibility if he's wanting what he wants. I, I hope everyone has noticed that with the new free agency rules and the new money and the new rookie factors and all that, that teams are not paying veterans as much as they used to. There's a reason Erlacher still hasn't got a job. There's a reason Charles Woodson hasn't still have, you know, he's still out there looking for a job. And there's a reason, you know, Israel Donajay is still talking and looking around because no one wants to overpay anymore. No one wants to offer anything because th there's no point. I mean, you can get, the rookie linebacker or the rookie defensive end in the third or fourth round that you know is young, viable, you can develop instead of overpaying for the veteran who, yes, he's very versatile, he's very, he's a great player, he can play defensive end, he can play de-tackle, but I really think Israel Donage is basically, unless he takes a pay cut, I don't think he's coming back because we're going to have barely a million dollars left after we sign all our rookies and maybe a million or two million, and, you know, it, it's looking like unless he takes a huge pay cut, just like if, you know, everyone still wants to say, well, Erlacher come back, 
it's looking like no. It's looking like you're, you're basically the what way you see the roster now is who I think will still be there bearing some huge cut or a restructure or a re-signing or extension. It's looking like Israel Donache really is the odd man out, even though everyone wants him back. It's just not happening. Okay. Hey, we got another tweet, man, and it's a tough one. It's from Bear Down Bureau at Bear Down Bureau. Awesome. Yeah, he says, uh, at, M- at MWB Show. What is the number one storyline for the Bears heading into 2013? Ooh, number you know, it, it has to be the storyline that's been the story since 2009 when the Bears gave up two first-round picks. How well or will Jay Cutler be able to lead the team? Or it's just going to be Jay Cutler. I'm just going to say that, just general. This storyline will be Jay Cutler. He has all the tools. He has all the weapon. He has the offensive coach. I can't explain it anymore. It is all on him to perform. And if he doesn't, I really think you know Phil Emery, Mark Trestman are just going to you know wipe the slate clean, try to get someone you know a rookie line or a rookie linebacker, rookie quarterback to come in and start. And basically, you know that's how. That's what's going to happen if Cutler does not perform this year. But that's going to be the number one storyline, Jay Cutler. I don't don't think you can, unless you have a good uh, opinion, tell me who you think will be the number one storyline. I I think that's that's a good – or you could take it another step and say it'll be the offense as a whole, kind of like it's been the last few years. You know, is Mike Martz the answer for the Bears offense? Is Mike Tice the answer for the Bears offense? You know, is Mark Tressman and Aaron Cromer the answer to the Bears offense? That's so yeah. in a way you're right, and a lot of that has to deal with Cutler, but we'll see. I, and you you're right. That's that's a that is a big storyline. And unfortunately you're right, because even if even if Cutler doesn't look very good this year because of scheme or protection or whatever Mm-hmm. I'm still not convinced that it would be all Cutler's fault. Because a, lo- really? a lot, I mean, Cut- Cutler has a, some flaws like everyone else, but I, th- I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback, and I think he's got a perfect attitude to be a Bear. But I just unfortunately, don't see it. I mean, I- <laughs> unfortunately, you're probably right. I mean, if the Bears' offense tanks this year. They're, they'll probably point at Cutler. I mean, I'm pretty sure that no matter what you do, I mean, you cannot say that the Bears have done everything they can to really help Jay Cutler. The first round pick was an offensive guard. The first draft or the first player we signed was our left tackle, Jerome Bustrod. We got an offensive line guy who. A lot of people think he could be a head coach, and you and you got an offensive strategist who some people think he's the next Bill Walsh. I mean, everything is there to make Jay Cutler succeed, and whether or not he does or not, it's going to come down to him, regardless of any circumstances. You know, if the whole old line was to get hurt or Brandon Marshall was out, I mean, you got Alshon Jeffrey, you got Martellus Bennett. I mean, there's so many players ready to help Jay Cutler and everything's there to help Jay Cutler, he just got to take advantage of it. I mean, you got to stop saying I mean, but I really think the Bears have put Jay Cutler in the best position to succeed since he's been here. Granted, it would have been great to have all of this back in 09 to see what really could have happened, but we can't play the what-if game. We just got to hope that now he's ready to perform and he's ready to do what, he was brought here to do, and that's provide the Bears with an offense to, you know, basically go hand in hand with the defenses we've had here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to get you down because I know it, it, it's tough to think about, but if you really think about it, we're we're nearing the point where if Jay Cutler doesn't show up, we'll have to let him go because I mean we could. We could bring him back. That's totally, you know, that probably will happen if he doesn't have a great year. Even if he doesn't, they could still want him back, knowing that 
the rookie mar or the rookies coming in aren't that good, or you know, um, there's no free agent decent quarterback that they could pick up or trade for. But I really think that's going to be the big hit is how much you want next year and how well he performs. If he performs really well, I think he'll be a bear for a very long time. And if he doesn't, I really think Mark Trestman is going to want to move on and, you know, develop his own talent. He even said today that he really liked uh, not the rookie rookie last year, uh, Matt Blanchard. He really liked what he was uh, doing today, and he thought he picked up everything really quickly. So, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, start controversy, but I'm just saying, you know, Jay Cutler, he better be, he better bring his A game. I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't. I really think he, a great player. I think he has uh, hid everything that most fans knew, but a lot of other teams or a lot of other analysts and writers, you know, they totally just said Jay Cutler needs to step up or Jay Cutler needs to stop right. complaining right. when he had legitimate excuses. It's just now he kind of doesn't. Everything ready for him. So as much as I really want him to succeed, he, he better be ready to succeed because everyone is going to be saying you have a left tackle, you have uh, two new guards, you, you have a decent offensive coordinator and offensive lineman. They're going to they're going to be tough on him next year, and they should, but it's just that's what's going to happen, you know? Oh, yeah, you're right, man, and it'll be interesting. How, how good of a feeling is it that we've got so much talent on offense? It's been a it's long, probably, long time since we've had you know, <laughs> three good linemen and three good receivers and a good quarterback and, you know, a good tight end. It's a I good think, feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's the best feeling I've had in a long, long time because – I can't explain how tired I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I'm going to talk about my my generation real quick. Over the past, you know, four years before we got Brandon Marshall, it was tough playing the video game called Madden because you could run the ball, you could you could make some pass plays work, but you never really could enjoy it because you never had a number one receiver. You never had a decent O-line. It was always horrible, and then – when we finally got Brandon Marshall on Madden, I started to appreciate even more how special it was to have a player like Brandon Marshall on Bennett and adding, you know, some decent offensive line depth. It, it just makes me more excited for not only the season but the video game. And I know it's kind of lame to talk about it, but to <laughs> finally have the ability to say that, you know, everything's there, there are some pieces missing. We don't know the second wide receiver. We, we don't know who the slot receiver is. We really don't know if the offensive line will work or if the offense will work in general. But to know all the pieces are there to actually make everything work is a lot better than hoping, you know, the scheme will build players. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's – it. You, you don't need the game, though, to appreciate it. All you got to do is watch the highlights from last year. The dude was awesome. I can't, I can't yeah. believe how happy I am that he's a bear, and how happy he's I keeping still his nose clean and his attitude good, and he's being a leader for other teammates. That's, that's, that's he's probably the best thing to happen to our offense in a long time. He, he yeah, could end I mean, up being more impactful than Cutler, no matter how great Cutler gets. We're always going to look at Marshall and be like, he changed everything. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I was about to say that is we need to write that down because that's exactly how I feel and exactly what everyone needs to realize. Before Brandon Marshall got here, you had Jay Cutler, who was a good quarterback, making things work. But when Brandon Marshall got here, everything opened up, and that's why I was so disappointed in last year. I thought everything would open up with Brandon Marshall demanding double team, and you had you know. I mean, we don't have another wide receiver. We didn't have one last year really helping Marshall out. But I thought having him would open up everyone. But we had too many players who didn't step up. And hopefully this year, not only will we see Brandon Marshall, you know, not have to get targeted a million times just because we can't throw to anyone else, but hopefully we'll see some of the screens and Forte come back into the game and Forte be able to, like, you know, help give Cutler just another target because the more weapons you have, the better. It doesn't. I don't care if you have four tight ends. As long as they're weapons, 
you can have four tight ends, just like the Pacers have shown us, just like every other, you know, offense who's sort of moving that way. Your Michael Finley, um, you know, the Saints offense with, uh, I forgot there, Jimmy Graham. I mean, yeah. Anthony, Gon- or not Anthony Gonzalez, but um, and the Falcons having, you know, Ronnie White, Julio Jones, two very, de- both of those wide receivers could start anywhere and be the number one receiver, but they have two number one receivers. And then they have a tight end who, you know, Gonzalez, he's going to go down as a Hall of Famer. Just to have that many weapons and have everything ready, you know, that's that's why I like this offense. I think hopefully having all those weapons and everything together, we'll start to see some more. We'll start to see the offense we've always wished we had that we haven't had ever since, like, the 50s. How, how, how much better <laughs> does Alshon Jeffrey need to be for – for Marshall and Jeffrey to be considered right there with Jones and White. How much are how, like how, how close are they? Say, how, you know, how, how much better does Jeffrey need to be? I mean, and can he get that? Can he get that good? Does he have the potential? I really think. I don't think uh, Alston Jeffrey had the same potential as Julio Jones. I think Julio Jones, what benefited him the most was not only was his speed tremendous in the reason why and his ability and his toughness and all that, I think he developed a lot quicker. And I really don't, I, I, I don't have no really solid explanation for it, but if I had to consider how long it would take to see them on the same level, excuse me, with the Falcons wide receiver court, I would say we're going to have to wait another like two, maybe three years even though you know Julio Jones stepped up his second year and his rookie year was really good, but I think Alshon Jeffrey still has to learn how to you know he doesn't need to he needs to stop getting jammed at the line of scrimmage. You know he needs to get better at releasing. He needs to be, uh, I guess you could say, you know how a lot of his uh, he would have a lot of he would have a lot more or better numbers this year or last year. The reason he didn't was because a lot of times he would extend. You know he would push the guy back, and you know. Some of the star players, a lot star of times, wide receivers. Even, even when he pushed, he would get called for interference, and it yeah, wasn't really that bad. Yeah, running, and, you know, someone, like, touched his hand, you know, put his, made his hand go back, you know, they called it. But he, he really needs to work on that. And not taking anything Brandon Marshall said about players seriously after he said Devin Hester would have a better year than him. But he did say Alson Jeffrey looks like he's going to come after and take his spot, which – I'm totally – I'm happy hearing that. I want to see this guy step up because I think he can be – you know, we, we've heard it, but I don't want to say it to kind of hurt his ego. He could be a baby marshal <laughs> in the sense there's, of – There's could, nothing wrong with that. That's a comment. Yeah, I mean, he can totally be uh, – when Brandon Marshall couldn't get to the first, like, uh, OTAs, I think, he because um, of the storms there, they had, like, some huge blood in Chicago. I hope everyone was okay. On that note, but um, he couldn't get there, so Alston Jeffrey had to step up and take the other spot. And they said he looked great, and they said he was catching everything. And I really want to see this guy. I mean, the only thing I don't like is he's not a speed threat, but you know, neither is Brandon Marshall. But they get open, and they got some. You know, they got that long stride, and they get wide open and everything. So I think you could give it another two or three years, just depending on how quickly Alston Jeffrey picks up the offense, because that's the problem. I'm not worried about Jay Cutler, Brandon Marshall, you know, even Martellus Bennett. I'm worried about all the rookies coming in to learn the new system that we're already having to go through, because with Cutler, he, he can kind of, he already has chemistry with Marshall, so it's going to be quickly for them to figure out what they need to do on offense, but you know, Jeffrey's got to get on that same, pay, same page, and I'm pretty sure he will, but all the other people, you know, that's why when we were talking about uh, the rookie wide receiver, I was thinking, you know, just maybe he might make the team, even though he looks really good and numbers look great. But we have a lot of wide receivers on this, on this offense or on the team in general. And it's like, you know, another big wide receiver who decent speed, good hand. But, you know, we kind of have already have that. Right. Yeah, I was, I was, he's a good pick. But I was surprised that we took him. 
I figured we would have got someone to replace uh, Hester and Knox. I was really looking for some guy that can sprint faster than anyone on defense and get behind them. But we, you know, we took another big physical guy. And maybe that should tell us something they, about the offense of future. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I was going to say, maybe we don't, maybe Trestman doesn't want that kind of offense where, you know, the slot receiver, you know, we need the slot receiver. Maybe he just wants, you know, two decent, you know, solid wide receivers who, you know, because we're not going to be running any deep routes. Supposedly we're going to be getting the ball out quickly, so there's really no need for a speedy or a fast threat if we're not going to actually get to use them for long, long plays, which I'm sure we will, but I'm pretty sure that Mark Trestman just wants to get the ball out quickly, and what better way to do it with big body receivers who can grab the ball at different heights and positions to really help out the quarterback. Okay, let's just let's give it another five minutes there, and I'm going to give you a topic to discuss, Eric, and hopefully we'll get another tweet within this next five minutes. If that happens, we'll keep talking. But <laughs> let, let me ask you this one question. Kyle Adams, Evan Rodriguez. Uh, will they both see significant playing time this year? Will they see any playing time this year? Will they be Bears? I think – one of them will be Bears and one will be gone. And that's, I think Kyle Adams, Kyle Adams is going to be the odd man out because even though we saw him play a couple times, he just doesn't really have any anything explosive about him. He's just a simple kind of hybrid fullback tight end that we were using. I really think Evan Rodriguez is going to see a, a lot of playing time if he performs well and if he steps up because – one of the main reasons we got him was he's a hybrid tight end who's really, really fast, and a lot of people compared him to Aaron Hernandez from the Patriots, which I'm totally okay with comparing him like that if he's going to play like that. But we haven't seen much, and it's not good when Kyle Adams starts over you. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, but if you're a draft pick and you're, you know, you're trying to start on this team and fullback slash tight end hybrid, it's the only thing you got going for you, and – just really, really white guy who's not fast, who has questionable hands and decent or barely okay blocking technique, and he's starting over you doesn't, you know, bode well for you. But I really think Evan Rodriguez, I really I want to see him perform. I really want to see the hybrid. I want to move him around, you know, maybe have a double screen with, you know, Forte going over there and then, you know, Evan Rodriguez going over there because he's that fast and he – if you ever watch his highlights, and yes, it's college, but if you watch it, he's physical, he's tough, and he's fast, and he's not afraid to hit. So right. I'm really right. hoping he would step up, but we'll see. Because the thing is with uh, Mark Trestman's offense is we have glimpses of it with Oakland, and we have glimpses of it in uh, Canada, but we don't know which one we're really going to get because, you know, the one in Oakland was a long time ago. The one in Canada is in Canada. And, you know, that's a whole different offense, whole different scheme they run up there. But it's going to be weird seeing a different offense that the head coach is deciding on and not the offensive coordinator. Because the blame now, which is going to be different, whenever, you know, the Bears lost, it was the offensive coordinator. Now the blame, if the Bears lose on offense or the offense isn't playing well, it's going to go straight to the head coach. There's not going to be no – you know, we need to blame Aaron Cromer or, you know, it's, it's going to be all on him now, which I hope Mark Trestman is ready for that because in Chicago we like to crucify anyone who doesn't perform well or who doesn't, you know, live up to expectations. And I hope Mark Trestman is ready for that. Right. And another quick little point, when we were talking about the uh, Bear Down Bureau sent us the tweet about the number one storyline. And hopefully, you know, it is the offense. But if, you know, three, four, five games into the season and we start talking about defense and how this is not a very good defense, then that will quickly become a storyline. You know, Because there will be a lot of people wondering where Lovey Smith is if our defense is terrible. They will, or they'll ask where Rod Marinelli is, because that's the one thing I think people don't realize, and if you read the stories over time and you heard what people said about him, they really loved Rod Marinelli because he would get him ready for every 
game, no matter how significant it was or not. And he would also just have them just ready to run, uh, Erlacher just to quote him, to run through a brick wall for him. So I really, really wish we would have kept Rod Marinelli, but with the whole, you know, firing Levy Smith, it was kind of obvious that he was going to want to move on. Sadly, he went to the Cowboys, but you got to do what you got to do, right? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I, I was upset, too. I, I couldn't believe it. I really thought Marinelli would stick around, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Mel Tucker's got some talent, and we need to see what he can do with it. Eric, man, I've had a blast tonight. I uh, hope you've had fun. I have. I have. We should do this more often. Well, we will next week, of course. <laughs> Yeah, sure. We'll do something a little more formal next week. And uh, keep your questions coming, folks. I want to give a special thanks to uh, Bear Down Bureau and Clixie Picks for sending us tweets tonight. That really helped the show move along. And uh, think of some more questions we'll ask next time. Eric, thank you, sir, and we'll do it again soon. All right, man. Have a good night, okay? All right. Good night, Bear.